Hello everyone. Welcome to a Great Light Channel, a channel that is dedicated to advancing the kingdom of God in you. There are people of similar purpose which is in Jesus Christ known unto everyone. We are about to listen to a post already on Sai's first message at Minister's Conference 2022. Listen and bless. God's power has work. Thank you. They have what? Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. First thing I want to bring to your notice is that this is not a parable. The traditional texture of parables is that it doesn't carry the identity of persons that are interacting in the scenario. In this particular discourse, we have individuals that Jesus was careful enough to mention. Second thing I need to bring to our notice is this fact. Are you there with me in verse 23? Before we begin the discussion, there are a few things we need to note. Second thing we need to note is in verse 23, the word hell there. If you click on it and check your lexicon, it is Hades. Hallelujah. What is Hades? Because if we do not do this definition of terms, you are likely to forget you are likely not to be able to enter into the full economy of revelation that is trapped in the scriptures. It's the word Hades that is used. And Hades is the general name for the abode of departed spirits. You know, the Bible says that it is appointed unto man once to die, and the next kingdom event after death is called judgment. Now, before the time of judgment, uh, the people that die are trapped into a waiting area. That waiting area for departed spirits is what is called Hades. Are you still with me? Any of you that have traveled using an airplane before, normally when you come to the airport, you are advised to arrive at the airport, like if it's a domestic flight, two hours before the time of flight. And if it's an international flight, you need to come there three hours before the time of flight so that you can finish all the identification issues, baggage issues, checking in formalities, and you are admitted through the security lane into the waiting lounge. The waiting lounge is the place that you while away time until the time of your flight comes. Now, there, there are quite a number of ways of whiling away time. For, for, for some very serious office people, you will see them with their computers. They are trying to meet up with um, deadlines. Trying to, but you see, even though they are so busy, what they are doing is that they are waiting because the, their feet cannot change the time of the flight. All right? The time of the flight is already fixed. So they need to get busy. There's nothing they can do about changing that time. So they use the time to do other things. And that's how it is in Hades. Hades is a location, a, spiritual, a location of a spiritual place that accommodates departed spirits. It, the lounge is so vast that it currently accommodates the party spirits of many generations. Are you with me? You are not with me. Second thing, third thing I need to mention before we begin the study. And meanwhile, I'm not the preacher for the night. I'm just trying to <laughs> sell a body to us. The body that is the brain behind this event, each and every one of us will need to carry it as much <laughs> as we that received it. It must become as much a part of you 
as your own beating heart. It's a clarion call to every minister of the gospel. Are you still with me? All right. So, Hades, which we have defined to be the place for departed spirits, has two compartments. The first compartment in the Greek is called Jehina. It's a place of the torment of fire. Now, it's an environment that lacks one fundamental element. There are four fundamental elements, and that is earth, land, wind, and fire. But uh, Jehina is lacking water. It's an imbalanced ecosystem. It's a strange place. It has been empowered <laughs> with thermal abilities. Jehina. It's a place of terror. And uh, Jesus made a few statements connecting the people's earthly life to their current state in the waiting lounge. Are you with me? The second aspect of Hades is paradise. How many of you still remember when Jesus was on the cross, Jesus made a statement to the criminal that made a request from him. The criminal asked him saying, remember me when you go into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you will be with me where? Paradise. And if I take you to the book of, of um, um, Romans chapter 10 beginning from verse 9. Can we do that? What happened to my scripture? Now go to verse 7. Let me see verse 7. Okay, verse 6 and 7 is the scripture that I'm looking for. He said, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thy heart, Who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up again from the dead. Can you, do you, do you notice that when he spoke about bringing Christ from the dead, it was bringing him up? So that place he went that he called paradise is a place, is in the deep. It is where? Downward. So Hades has two compartments. The first compartment is Jehina, and the second compartment is paradise. I have a lot of scriptures to to, to dredge out of the Bible to support this simple presentation that I'm making. But the purpose of the presentation is not to show you how much scripture I know, but to communicate a body to your heart. Hallelujah. Now, having understood that, the Bible makes us to understand a few things. One of the things that the Bible makes us to understand was that the rich man was rich. He had good stuff in his life, lifetime. And the reason why he was in hell was not because of his riches. The reason why he was in hell was because of a more fundamental matter. He did not accept God's solution for the issue of man's fall. God's pathway to salvation was not accepted, unfortunately for him. All his enjoyment in life was by no means compared to, uh, in this realm, by no means compared, if you, if you put it side by side, what he lost, uh, by not accepting the path to salvation. You will notice when he was in Jehina, he didn't remember that he ate ice cream. The memory of that which took place in time was no longer with him. Meanwhile, he was able to identify the man that normally comes to beg from him. 
So in terms of class and status, while they were alive, he was a prominent personality. But he never knew that a beggar that used to come to his house to look for crumbs had something, knew something, was experiencing something that made him a preferred personality in the afterlife. And when he found himself in the waiting lounge, I hope you know what we call hell, which is the traditional name for Jehina in English language. Hellfire. It's temporal. It's not permanent. It's a waiting lounge. And the reason why God decided to admit the children of disobedience into the waiting lounge of affliction. Are you there? It's because he wants them to begin to gradually adjust to the ultimate judgment, which is the lake of fire. So it's just like, are you with me? All right. And amen. Uh, and that's why, that's the reason for paradise. Paradise is a place of gradual adjustment so that when you enter into heaven, the annals of heaven, you, at least you'll be able to cope with a sharp difference. Is if you find a poor man from Demekwe and you transmit 10 million into his account, he will die next Friday. <laughs> he will die with, with a bottle of Sazenbrau. He will be dead. The reason was because the, 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 the change that took place was too sharp. So what God does is that he will admit you into paradise so that you can be undergoing gradual adjustment. In that place, are you still with me? Yes. One of the things you will not have in that place is your, either your earthly or your heavenly body. You will not have it. Meanwhile, if you study the writings of Paul in the book of Hebrews, you will find out that this our earthly body is a veil. Do you know that every time you heard the voice of God, the Holy Ghost had to take you beyond this veil in order for you to receive transmission from God's realm? What, the reason why I'm making all these statements is because in that place you will not have this body, neither will you have your heavenly body. You'll be exposed to glory, to Shekinah, raw. And that is the mode from whence you will begin to adjust gradually to accommodate the splendor of the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Now, so there is this gradual adjustment unto perdition. There is this gradual adjustment unto joy eternal that is taking place in the two compartments. They are exposed to two different kinds of environment. Are you still with me? Like I told you, Jehina lacks water. Have you been able to survive in the dry season when it's difficult to access water in Makoti? How many of you can survive one day without it? Not just, you know how it feels when you have not taken your bath for 24 hours, for 48 hours, for 72 hours. That's not an affliction compared to what we are talking about. There's an oven there. A flame that, that, that... <laughs> Hallelujah. The, 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 the hot spot of the impact of the flame was not even his body. It was his tongue. I don't want to press into that. <laughs> so if, 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 a, if an allowance of cooling were to take place, he would have preferred it where? Ah. We don't have time for the description. Hallelujah. So when the man came to the full realization of the torment that was available in hell, he made a request quickly. And the request generated a lot of insight. Such insight that we would not have had except that request went out. The, the request he made was, can you send Lazarus? Now, you see, even though he was still, he was in Jehina. His concept of Lazarus did not change. Lazarus was the beggar, so we can send him. So, can, can you, <laughs> can we arrange how to send Lazarus 
Hallelujah. So you will still see that in that realm, his memory was not deleted. He didn't have a body, but his mind was not taken from him. His mind was still active. He could still recognize. He could still remember. Are you there? Then he made the request. Said, ah, can we send Lazarus to my father's house? So this man, when he was alive, he never felt that salvation was needful. But on this other side, he found out that there is nothing that we can exchange for salvation. And he is a rich man, and probably from a rich father. And we can now understand the reason why he was he even went into hell. It was because he was a victim of the deceitfulness of riches. And his brothers are in the same condition, and they are likely to end up here. So, can you send Lazarus to go and warn them? Then Abraham brings perspective. First of all, Abraham reveals to the man that there is a mighty gulf. There is something like the Bermuda Triangle, a force field that, that insulates one region from another. Secondly, even though the, the realms are insulated by that force field that we do not adequately understand, it is possible for you to see through the force field. Are you there? But you cannot crisscross. Second thing that Abraham said is that they have Moses and the prophets let them hear them. It means, are you there? It means that there are warnings that the minister of the gospel, ministers of the gospel, are supposed to send out in view of the stark realities that hold sway in the age to come. Are you with me? Now, we went for a prayer meeting. I traveled from my own place to the place of the prayer meeting. And many other ministers traveled in. So they gave me a slot to teach and then to advance the burden of the Lord. Are you still with me? The second day when I came for the prayer meeting, the Holy Ghost in my spirit was vexed. And I know that the Holy Spirit likes prayer. So I wanted to find out why the Holy Ghost was troubled. Are you there? So I began to... Then I traced it to one minister that was in that conference. Even though I knew that anything that was wrong was wrong with this minister, I did not know what it was. Until after one of the morning sessions, then a pastor came to me and said that they caught that pastor in fornication. After the prayer meeting, he went to cool off with a damsel. In fact, may the Lord give you understanding. The reason why a minister can finish a prayer meeting where we are, trying, we are begging God and ends up with a lady is because he has not met Moses and the prophets. So he, he, he can accommodate a lot of things because he doesn't have a good perspective of how the next age is and how God's government is set up in the next age. Do you know when we go for crusades, we give out decision slips. So the people write their name so that we can contact them after the meeting. Is that not so? Right now, decision slips have another use. 
a preacher wanted to come on the platform and he took some decision slips and crammed people's name and their phone number and was on the stage and said, the Holy Ghost is speaking. God is speaking. And he began to mention the number and the names of people that were extracted from decision slips. Meanwhile, as he's doing it, they are hailing him, say, Professor! The reason why he can continue in that is because he has not met Moses and the prophets. Moses, Abraham was telling the young man that the land of the living has sufficient manpower of witness. Let them hear them. Please help me tell your neighbor. You have Moses and the prophets. Hear them. Hello. I hope you've been blessed by this sermon. Watch out for our next post by clicking on the subscribe button and turning on your notification bell. Kindly like and share this video so that we can reach more people and more souls can be saved into the kingdom of God. Thank you.